Welcome today. This is Beacon of Hope Ministries in Clearwater, Florida. We're glad to be with you. We have people in the room. We have people on Zoom. So, and now we have people on Facebook Live. So that's really a cool thing. We thank God for technology and we thank God really for the last couple of years, our technology here has improved drastically as we've been able to get newer, uh, newer equipment. So we thank God for that. And we thank God for the word of God as it goes out today from Beacon of Hope. Uh, please share our post on Pastor Marsha McAllister. We have Beaconites in the room, we have Beaconites on Zoom, and we also have Beaconites on Facebook, so that's pretty cool. So we're glad you're with us today. We're in a series, it's part three of this new series called Jesus Messiah. And um, we are going to Luke chapter six, and we're going to verse six. So that may be easy to find, Luke six, six. Um, we have, we talked about this, I think I mentioned it almost every week, that we have had a blessing around here to be able to watch The Chosen. We watched it actually in our sanctuary, both the seasons. What a blessing that was. And we will do that again as they continue to put out seasons. It was really a, a great way to put into a, really a deeper realization of these stories. And here's one of those we saw on Chosen. And um, if you want to follow along, today I'm in the Passion Translation. It is a fairly new translation, and I'm loving it. I'm usually in the Amplified, but today the Passion Translation, if you want to follow along on your phone. Luke chapter 6, verse 6. On another Sabbath day, Jesus was teaching in the synagogue, and in the room with him, like in the room right here, in the room with him was a man with a deformed right hand. Okay, some of you remember that picture in The Chosen, the deformed right hand. Everyone watched Jesus closely, especially the Jewish religious leaders and the religious scholars. Okay, all the religious people are watching, what is he going to do? Here he is, he showed up in this synagogue, and there's this guy, and he doesn't know what, the, the people are wondering, okay, what's Jesus going to do? He came to church today, what, we've heard about him, what's he going to be up to? Uh, to see if Jesus would heal on the Sabbath day. Here's why they were so curious. They were so curious because yes. <laughs> they were so curious because you're not supposed to do anything on the Sabbath day, right? And so they thought, ah, Jesus showed up to church. So what's going to happen? Is he going to do something today that he's not supposed to do? Why? They were looking for a reason to accuse him. Well, everybody say the word accuse. All right, so who is the accuser of the brethren? The devil, right? Revelation chapter 12, 10 to 12 says the accuser, he's working night and day trying to accuse us, okay? I've mentioned this before, but it bears repeating. The devil will always try to accuse you to you. Okay, why? Because he loves to condemn, right? And remember Romans 8, 1 says there is therefore now no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus, right? So when you are saved and you are confessing things that you do, whatever, you don't have to take that condemnation. That's coming from the accuser of the brethren, right? So remember that. He accuses you to you. You know what? He accuses other people to you. You ever had that happen? Where you are suddenly like, ah, oh, they didn't talk to me right, or they didn't hug me, or they didn't... I didn't feel like they wanted me to be there or whatever the case may be. So he accuses you to you. He accuses you to others and, frankly, others to you also. And the other thing he does, guys, is he accuses God to you. Have you had that happen? Where all of a sudden you're feeling like God doesn't really love me like he loves somebody else. Or God's not as, doesn't seem like he's listening to me like he listens to somebody else's prayers. That's the devil coming and accusing God to you. All right, so we refuse all accusation, right? And Jesus refused the accusation because it says right here, they were eager in the end of this verse to find a reason. This is verse 7. They were eager to find a reason to accuse him of breaking the Jewish laws. Okay, don't forget, your enemy, and we'll just leave it right there, but he's always looking for a reason to accuse you, okay? So the verse 8 of Luke 6. Jesus knowing their every thoughts. Now, I've got to stop right there because if you take notes, number one would have been, I, I don't have these written down, so as we go. 
Number one would be look out for the accuser of the brother because he's always going to come and try to do that, right? Mm -hmm. And then put the, put the verses Revelation 12, 10 to 12, and Romans 8, 1. There's no condemnation, right? Now here's the second thing. Jesus knowing their every thought. So if you take notes, write down point two. Jesus knows your every thought. Yes. Does that kind of like blow you away? Yes. You think, oh, no, how could he possibly do that? I was driving down the road yesterday. I was out showing homes, and I was driving down the road because they were behind me, and I was just thinking that, God, you know, the thought came to me, as it does so often, God, how can you know every thought that everybody has around the globe at the same instant? But he does. That is so wild to me, isn't it, to you? And Jesus, knowing their every thought, said to the man with the deformed hand, now wait a minute, whose thoughts is he knowing? Everybody, right? But in particular here, he knows that the religious leaders are going, are, they're looking for reason to condemn him. So, in our right minds, we would say, well, then Jesus just behave today, right? Just behave today. Don't do anything out of the ordinary because you're going to get some stir people up, right? I've had people say to me in the ministry, I hope we're having a calm day today, Pastor. Really? Well, talk to the Holy Spirit about that because I have no idea what's going to happen, and I never do. Right? I don't know what, what God is going to do. So Jesus, knowing their every thought, said to the man with the deformed hand, Now wait a minute, Jesus. You're going out on the limb here. They're going to be condemning you. Come and stand here in the middle of the room. That's happened around Beacon. Uh, so and so, come stand up here. God's got something for you. Right? It's yeah. happened. Happened just Sunday before last or last Sunday. So the man that with the deformed man, uh, hand gets up and came forward. Now, when God calls you out, guys, respond because he's got a blessing in store for you. Okay? If God says through someone, come up here, I want to lay my hands on you and pray over you. Or here's a handkerchief that's anointed with oil, and I want to pray over you. Guys, don't right. miss that opportunity right. to receive what God the Father has for you. Okay, because if he's calling you out, there's a reason, and you right. got you got a gift coming your way. Amen. Right? That's right. Woo! Praise mm. God. So what did he do? He got up and came forward. Okay, Siri's one of my best friends. Is she yours? Yeah, yeah. she's mine. And so I said to the other day, I said, hey, Siri, define rise for me. Define rise. And here's what Siri said. To move from a lower position to a higher one. Siri's right. I always tell her she's right. You're right, Siri. That's great. To move from a lower position to a higher one. To rise, right? Have you ever baked bread? No. Okay, that's not something I do at all. But I, growing up on the mission field, our uh, kitchen helper we had in our house, in the mission station, she made bread every day. And she also made tortillas. Oh, I love tortillas. But when she would make this bread, you'd smell it all through the house, right? And and you would see she'd put it out there kind of on the in the patio at the, where the screen was. She'd lay it on this little ledge, and, then it would, and she'd put a little cover over it, and it would start to rise. It would rise from where it had been in the pan to where it was going to be delicious. I like that metaphor, do you? Whoa, Jesus said, I'm the bread of life. Yeah. Guys, when we make bread, I never do anymore. But when we did, I don't know if I ever have come to think of it. But when we make bread, it starts out kind of little, right? Mm -hmm. Not much there. But when, when the air gets to it and when it begins to do and that yeast begins to do what it's supposed to do, suddenly it, it's beautiful, right? It's gorgeous, okay? Here's what Jesus said to the man. Come and stand in the middle of the room. So he got up by an act of his will, and came forward. Rise means to come from a lower position to a higher position, okay? The title today is Rise and Be Healed. You know what that's saying? Come from where you've been to where God wants you to be, right? Everybody got that? Rise and be healed means I'm going to take an action, a definite decision. I'm going to move from to... Okay, everybody's got that? So he got up 
And he came forward. And Jesus said to all them who were there, let me ask you a question. Okay, now Jesus is asking questions. Which is better, to heal or to do harm on the Sabbath day? Now, he knows they're looking for something to accuse him about, right? Which is it better? Is it better to heal or is it better to harm? Okay? I have come to save a life, but you have come to find a life to destroy. That does that. You know what that reminds me of? John 10, 10. The thief comes, Jesus said. He said the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy, right? Jesus said, but I came to give you life and to give it abundantly. Okay, that's what Jesus came to do. Now, Jesus is challenging their rules. That's what he's doing here. And he's saying, wait a minute. Je Jesus is saying, I came to give you life. I came to bring you from something to a better place. Guys, when we're walking around with all the junk that the devil throws at us, whether it's our past, whether it's the condemnation, whether it's just all kinds of things where we haven't resolved them, God wants us to come from that up to Amen. this new place. Right. Okay, so he says in verse, uh, where are we? It's verse 10. One by one, Jesus looked. Oh, now, I love this verse. I'm in Luke 6, 10. And the Passion Translation. One by one, Jesus looked into the eyes of each person in the room. I'm going to do that right now. If Bernadette will look at me. Pat. Think about that. Now, this is just me. Becky always gives me a weird look. Some of you give me weird looks. But you know what? Think about that. Jesus looks from one person to the next and looks into their eyes. It's kind of weird when somebody looks into your eyes on purpose, isn't it? Yeah. Jen's going, yeah, that's kind of weird. Yeah, it is. Now, it's one thing if it's your sweetheart or somebody like that. But when it's somebody that just looks at you like, what are you up to, man? You know, it's confrontational, right? Jesus looked at each one in the eye. I love that. <laughs> and then he said to the man, all right, so he looks to see, how are you going to take this, kids? How are you going to take what's about to happen here, kids? He says to the man, stretch out your hand, your arm, and open your hand. Oh, that'll preach. We, I could preach a whole sermon on stretch out your arm and open your hand. You know why? Because the five-fold ministry is the hand ministry. Apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers open that up for everybody to see. Okay, when this man opens his hand, it's like it's releasing the healing power to even to us today. Because we have not forgotten this story, right, about the man with the withered hand. And Jesus said, stretch out your arm. That's what we're doing right now with this post to thousands of people. Right? right? What are we doing? Stretch out your arm, open your hand. So it's the ministry of the hand, which is the apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, teachers, going out through our Facebook audience to our Zoomies and to the room. I could go on and on with that. I'm not. That's just enough. And we'll go on about this. With everyone watching intently, he stretched out his arm. And nothing had happened to his hand. So everybody was really disappointed. Is that what your Bible says? No. No. His hand was completely healed. You know, I've heard uh, Christians through the years. I didn't grow up in a church where they anybody prayed over anybody for healing. My dad was a pastor <laughs> and on, on the mission field. I have never saw, except my Uncle Fred that I talked to you about, but in the church that was on the mission field, nobody ever prayed over anybody for healing. But when I saw it with my own eyes, which I talked about a couple weeks ago, and I was like 13 years old and I saw it, more than once, it changed my life, right? And, I, and and those people, like the guy that, the blind guy in Honduras I told you about last week or the week before, and also the little boy with the naps and all that, when Uncle Fred lifted his hand from that little boy's face, there were no gnats. There was no pus. He was completely healed. Okay, y'all following that? Jesus doesn't do a halfway job. Amen. And I've heard people say, well, if I just get partly healed, I'll be better. If I could just get a little soreness out of this big toe, I'll be better. Guys, why can't we ask God to be completely healed? That's what Jesus did, right? Y'all follow all that? Yes. Well, in verse 11 of Luke 6, the room erupted with thanksgiving and praise to God. No. The room erupted with, oh, this must be the Messiah. No. 
The room erupted with bitter rage because of this Sabbath day healing. It broke their rule. You know, when you study the Gospels, you find out Jesus is a rule breaker all the time. He is all the time. In fact, he loved, and I, you see this in The Chosen, he loved to do healings on the Sabbath. Why? Because that got everybody in an uproar and everybody's paying attention. Sometimes, guys, we just got to get everybody paying attention. You know what I'm saying? And so they burst into bitter rage. And from that moment on, the religious leaders plotted among themselves on how they might harm Jesus. Yeah. Let's go to chapter 7 and go to verse 1. Chapter 7 of Luke. After Jesus finished giving revelation to the people on the hillside, we're not going to talk about the Sermon on the Mount today. We'll do that here soon in the series. He went on to Capernaum. And there he found a Roman military captain who had a beloved servant he valued highly. The servant was sick to the point of death. Okay? Everybody see where I am? Luke 7 verses verse 2. When the captain heard that Jesus was in the city, he sent some respected Jewish leaders to plead with him to come and heal his dying servant. Guess what? And the more Jesus did these healings, the more he reached out, the more controversial he became. Then there were pockets of people here and there who go, that's the Messiah. That's the Messiah. This must be the Messiah. And this was one of those guys. And he wasn't a Jew, guys. He wasn't a Jew. Love it. Jesus came for all of us. I don't care what color your skin is. I don't care what, what country you were born in. Jesus came for all of us. It's the Amen. good news of the gospel for all creation. Right? Amen. And so this guy heard that Jesus was in the city. He said he, he had some Jewish friends. And so he said to them, Hey, I want you to go and talk to that Jesus. He thought that one of the Jewish leaders would make some headway to Jesus. Because, you know, after all, they're Jewish. He was Jewish. So he says to them, would you go? If anyone deserves to have a visit from you, it is him. So the Jewish leaders go to Jesus and they say, um, you know what? This guy, he gives. He's even bought. He built our, our synagogue. He has been so friendly to Jews. Wait a minute. The Jewish leaders were saying to Jesus, you deserve to come and pray over his servant because he's given a lot of money. Come on. People, we don't get the blessings of God before because we tithe really well. Amen. That's right. It is not about how much money you give. Amen. Have I known people who did that? Yeah, I've known people who stood up and said, today I'm putting a check in. This happened in my church in Indiana. Hmm. Because we didn't have heat in that building. We had a fireplace that, that heat us and heated us, and it was cold in the winter. The ladies, we had a circle of prayer after the end of the service, and everybody's praying over each other. And she says, oh, I just wanted to let you all know that I put a check in today for $3,000 to buy a heating system. So, uh, Pastor, I want you, that's what I want you to do with the money. And I just want y'all to know that today. Wow. Well, yay! Praise God. But then everybody was swarming her. Wow, you did what? Oh, that's great because we're tired of chopping wood for church, you know? This is great. Guys, if God is not looking for us to get praise. Amen. When we tithe or when right. we pray over each other. That's right. Mm -hmm. It's not about that. Because the Jewish leaders say to Jesus, you know what? He deserves for you to go and pray over his servant because he's given a lot of money. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. Uh-uh. Mm -mm. You'll never hear us stand up and do anything like that. Right. I went to a, a um, crusade, and I'm not going to mention the guy's name. I took 30 or 40 people from my church in Indiana, and we drove to Cincinnati from Indiana to this crusade. So excited about going. Everybody was. There were some among us that were ill and they wanted to go up in the healing line of this evangelist. Before he came to the platform, they had a guy that stood up there and I kid you not, gave an offering call. So Nanny, your ears was very short and sweet today. He gave an offering call that went on 45 to 50 minutes. Oh and halfway through it, I'm like, 
got to be kidding. And some of my people were tired, and they're older people, and they were turning around and going, Pastor, is, he gonna, is the guy going to preach? Mm -hmm. It's me. And um, it kept on. It kept on. And, and just when you think he was going to pass the plate, he went right on again. Oh. Okay? And he kept it up 45 or 50 minutes. And then the guy comes up to preach. Well, now we've already been there an hour and a half. You think you guys sit here long. Okay? And we've driven from, from central Indiana. So it's a two and a half hour trip, trip home. We didn't go. We had a bunch of us. We didn't go stay in hotels. We had to drive home. Now people are turning around to me and going, Pastor, how long is this going to be? I said, it's me. I mean, I'm shocked at what was going on so far. We never did stay for the whole thing because too many were feeling bad or tired or they were uncomfortable in these hard seats. So we eventually left out a little early. But guys, here's a good example right here. The Jewish leaders said to Jesus, you deserve, this guy deserves for you to come and pray for his servant because he's given a lot of money. Mm -hmm. We don't beg for money at Beacon. Mm -hmm. God supplies. We don't even beg for money. We did the one GoFundMe play, uh, thing for our mission in, in Mexico. We may do another one. But it's not about begging. It's about saying, here's an opportunity for right. you to give and you be blessed. And that's what Paul said. When you give, you are blessed, right? You bless the ministry, but you're blessed. And so this was kind of weird to Jesus, I think. Oh, come, come pray for his servant, because he deserves for you to do that, because he's he built our, our meeting house. So in verse 6 of Luke 7, Jesus starts off with them. On his way, he stopped by the friends of the captain who gave this message. Master, hey, don't bother to come to me in person. I'm not good enough for you to enter my home. I'm not worthy enough to even come out to meet one like you. You know what? Jesus was impressed with this attitude. Because the attitude that the that the soldier sent word to Jesus was, hey, you are, I acknowledge who you are, and I'm I'm not worthy to even, even you come to my house. Okay? But if you would just, now here's the point I'm trying to get to. Here's what this, the centurion servant said. If you would just release the manifestation of healing right where you are, I know that my young servant will be healed. Guys, we have too often watched things on TV and we think it has to be that way. Do you know what it is? It is. It's releasing the manifestation of healing is speaking it. That's what it is. And, and he says, unlike you, I'm just an ordinary man. This guy knew who he was. Yet I understand the power of authority. I see that authority operating through you. We're teaching our Wednesday night Bible study on authority right now. And guys, when we understand the authority that we have in the name of Jesus, it is not about uh, your church rank. Pastor Jim and I have the same amount of authority as you do, right? Just because God put us in positions of leadership does not mean we don't have with that we have more authority. We don't have more authority to speak the name of Jesus. Guys, you have the same amount of authority. Amen. And Jesus says to him, so master, just speak the word and healing will flow. Woo, that is verse 8 of Luke 7. So here's the guy saying, Jesus, here's all you have to do. Just speak that word. Speak that word. We did this song, and we weren't planning on doing that. And I went back to the sound booth. Somebody saw it, and I said, Pastor Jim, put I Speak Jesus up here. Because I just felt in my spirit we needed to sing that song for some reason, and now I know why. Because, guys, when we speak Jesus, we use the authority of the Word of God that is right here. And we speak and we say, in the name of Jesus. Not in the name of some evangelist. Not in the name of some famous person. In the name of of Jesus Christ, verdad? In the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of Jesus Christ. That's what we pray, right? And this guy understood it, and he said, "Master, just speak the word, and healing will flow." Amen. Not might flow. Right. Everybody say will flow. Will, will flow. flow. Mm -hmm. When I turn on my spigot at home to get a, a drink of water or whatever. I don't worry that Diet Coke's going to come out of there. I don't worry that, oh, there's that milk, that fountain of milk coming out of my kitchen sink again. You know what I know? I know it's going to be water. 
Did you know that? Especially, well, I can't say that from some countries, but in the United States, when you turn on the speck, you, you, you get water, right? So we know. Let me tell you something. When you turn on the authority of God and you start that spigot going because you're going, God, I know there's power in your name. We sang Tasha, Tasha Cobb's song today. Break every chain. There's power in what? In the name. Okay? It's not my name. When we started Be uh, Cornerstone many years ago, people said, what shall we call this? Do you want to call it Marsha McAllister Ministries? I said, no way. And a couple of them said, what? A lot of people do that. I said, absolutely not. When we started Beacon, they said that same thing to me. Somebody the night we were picking the name. Do you want to put your name? I said, no, no. I want it to be a name that, that lifts up God. Cornerstone, Beacon of Hope. Not my name, right? The name is Jesus. A name above every name, God. Guys, at the name of Jesus, it says in Philippians 2, every knee shall bow one day, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. It's at the name of Jesus that people are healed. Amen. Jesus. He said, all you have to do is speak the word, and healing will flow. Woo! So, in verse 9, Jesus marveled at this. He turned around and said to the crowd that followed him, listen, everybody. Never have I found even one among the people of God like this who believes so strongly in me. Then Jesus spoke the healing word from a distance. Don't ever hesitate to pray for people in some other country or some other state or some other location in town, right? Then Jesus spoke the healing word from a distance. When the man's friends returned to home, they found the servant was completely healed and doing just fine. So we got to get to this last one. And it's verse, what is that? These are little tiny numbers here, 11 of Luke 7. Shortly afterward, Jesus left on a journey to go to the village of Nain. When a massive crowd of people followed him along with his disciples. As he approached the village, he met a multitude of people in a funeral procession who were mourning as they carried the body of this young man to the cemetery. The boy was his mother's only son, and she was a widow. Remember this song? This, I mean, this... Uh, this story. When the Lord saw the grieving mother, oh my guys, when Jesus saw the grieving mother, he thought, what is she doing crying about her son? No. When Jesus sees us hurting, you know what he does? He hurts with us. His heart broke for her. And that word, I can't say it, Pastor Jim, you know. Like Nizamai. There you go. That's the word. In Greek, it means from his innermost being, it actually means from his intestines. In other words, from clear within him, his heart broke for this mother. With great tenderness, he said to her, he, he didn't say, hey, quit your crying. No, he said, don't cry. Did I do that okay? He said, don't, don't cry, honey. Don't cry. And then he stopped. He stepped up to the coffin. He touched it. Whoa. When the pallbearers came to halt, Jesus said to the corpse, now he's speaking to a dead person. Young man, I say to you, arise <laughs> and live. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. Let faith arise in your soul. Rise and be healed in the name of Jesus. He will cleanse you and make you whole. What happened? Immediately the young man moved, sat up, and spoke to those nearby. Jesus presented the son to his mother alive. A tremendous sense of holy mystery swept over the crowd as they witnessed this miracle of resurrection. You know what they did? They shouted praises to God. It doesn't say they mobbed Jesus. It doesn't say that they were going, oh, wow, pray for me. No. They witnessed this miracle, and they shouted praises to God. God himself has visited us to bless his people. And a great prophet has appeared among us. And then the news of Jesus raced throughout Judea and the entire surrounding region. Now we're going to Psalm 91. 
and then we'll wrap it up here somehow. Not quite sure how. We're not about to be able to get through all Psalm 91. I just want to read a couple of places. Jesus, Messiah. Jesus is our Messiah. Amen. Would you all agree? He came to this earth to show us the love of the Father. He came to this earth to show us what God feels about you and about me. He came to this earth to show that God is the God of healing. Okay? Too many people believe that the only way they can get better is with medicine. I am not against medicine at all. Having gone through pre-med myself, having been married to a doctor for many years, I will tell you I am certainly not against medicine. We do not say to people, oh, throw away your glasses or throw away your pills. No, we don't do that. But we also say, if you want to touch from Almighty God, guess what? You came to the right point in time if you are ready to receive it. Because the key is whether or not we are ready. You know, sometimes we don't get healed because we are kind of content right where we are with that. Maybe it's one of those things we talked about at the other night in Bible study where we just get a lot of attention from it. So we get a lot of attention. Why do we want to be healed? Because everybody's noticing that I've got this and I've got that. No. Guys, we don't, we so often, I'll just put it this way, human beings so often don't receive what God has for them because they're content right where they are. They don't have the faith. That's right. They don't have the faith. A lot of times they don't have the faith. Yes. I'm glad you brought that up because here's what faith is. We, I have a shirt like this. We used to have beacon shirts like this in the early days. Faith is acting like God told you the truth. I love that. Faith is acting like God's not a liar. Didn't he say in the word, I'm not a liar like a few people. I know God is not a liar. And, and I love that shirt. I, and we'll have to get some more of those someday. Faith is acting like God told you the truth. And when you believe that God says, hey, rise up and be healed. Or rise up and take your blessing. Or rise up and claim that you're going to be delivered from this or that. When we get to that point in our lives, guys, it changes everything when we are ready to receive. Amen, amen. That's right. Mm. <laughs> Woo. Praise God. I remember the night I got married to my husband. I did. Very clearly. My dad stepped on my train and my dress as we walked down. He was walking me down. I almost fell. He almost fell. That would have been cute. And then we got up there, and the pastor there was doing the first part of the wedding, and then my dad took over to do the rest of it. And uh, so he had us go up on this platform, you know. We're standing there, and we had the unity candle, you know. Each have a candle. And uh, we went to blow it out, and my veil came this close. <laughs> there was a gasp in the whole room because the, when I went to blow it, the veil went right into the flame. Came this close from burning. But I remember the commitment I made. You remember when you've been in relationships or you've been married or whatever, and you remember that even though you went through a process, you know what was going on was really what was in your heart. You know, you, you, you were making that commitment because you loved that person, okay? And, and whether it was rocky, you almost fell, walking up, or you almost burnt the house down, or whatever the case may be, you still did it because you wanted to do it because it was in your heart. Right. Now, guys, when we receive what God has promised for us, we do that not because we're thinking, oh, if I give up this, will I get enough attention anymore? No. We, we, we do it because this is the commitment we're making. We want to be well and whole, Amen. right? Psalm 91 says this. When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, El Shaddai means the God Almighty of blessings. It means the, uh, the God that is more than enough. It's the God that meets our needs, right, El Shaddai. When you sit enthroned under the shadow of Shaddai, you are hidden in the strength of God most high. Whoa. Guys, we have to see ourselves. See, when I made that commitment that night so long ago, 50-some years ago now, when I made that commitment, right, I saw myself going through that ceremony and now being married, right? Committed. I saw myself doing that. I, and that's what that was about. Guys, we have to see ourselves 
in a position to receive what God has for us. Amen. Okay? Look at verse 2 of Psalm 91. He's the hope that holds me and the stronghold that shelter me. The only God for me and my great confidence. I want to look at verse 3, and, and this is the Passion Translation. He will rescue you from every hidden trap of the enemy. God. Does the enemy throw traps at us? Yes. Sometimes through well-meaning people, right? right? And he will protect you from false accusation. Whoa. And any, any deadly curse. His massive arms are wrapped around you, protecting you. You can run under his covering of majesty and hide. His arms of faithfulness are a shield, keeping you from harm. But i got to get to this verse, and it's verse 5 of Psalm, of Psalm 91. Listen to it in the Passion Translation. You will never worry about an attack of demonic forces at night, nor have to fear a spirit of darkness coming against you. Don't fear a thing. Amen. Don't Amen. fear a thing. Yes. Woo! Yes, God. Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not trouble you. Guys, we can walk in that place of security, right? Where we don't have to worry, oh, is the devil coming out and attacking me today? Guys, when that thought comes to you, you say, oh, wait a minute. Oh, the blood of Jesus. And if you have to sing it out loud, sing it out loud. Oh, the blood of Jesus. Oh, the blood of Jesus. It washes white as snow. That's your protection. You ever been caught out and, and you know, you have to get from the car to... The, from the restaurant to the car or wherever, and it's pouring down rain. And you don't have your raincoat? I'm not suggesting you start singing then. I'm just suggesting <laughs> that that sometimes is where we see ourselves. Like, we got to get from here to there, and how am I going to get there? Because look at this, it's happening, I'm seeing it. It's kind of a metaphor. Okay? Ooh, but if you happen to remember that you carried your umbrella in with you and you left it in the booth in the restaurant, I'm telling you that a real life thing that's happened to me. Okay, and, and you go back in, uh, did you find my umbrella? Yes, here it is. It's a nice umbrella. Yeah, thanks. And you go and you go, grab my umbrella. Put it up. I don't just carry it to the car the way they handed it to me. I actually pushed the button and it flew up by itself. And I walked out under it to my car and I got a tiny bit wet, but nothing like it would have been in the deluge of summer in Florida had I not had the umbrella. You have the umbrella of the protection of Almighty God and it's up to you what you do with it. Amen. You can Amen. leave it in the booth where you were. Or leave it in your car. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That happens in the summertime. That doesn't happen to me very often. I'll carry it wherever I go. Because I've had that happen to me. Okay? Whether by night or by day, demonic danger will not travel with you, nor will the powers of evil launched against you. Even in a time of disaster with thousands and thousands being killed, you'll remain unscathed and unarmed. So verse 9. When we live our lives within the shadow of God most high, our secret hiding place, we will always be shielded from harm. Highway Alley, your cooperator on that new truck, Gypsy, told us Wednesday night. It really hit me that you, she doesn't worry. She doesn't get in there and go, oh, what an awful thing that happened to me today as I drive this truck across the United States. She goes, no. God's my protector. Amen. He's my provider. Amen. Heal me and I shall, there's the words, be healed. Save me and I shall be saved. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Lord, thou art my praise. That's Jeremiah 17, 14. Guys, when you find yourself with something hanging on you, you don't know what to do, start praying. Right. Start Amen. using the authority you have, right? Amen. Whoa. Mm. 
Right, so we're going to close with this verse. It's 15 and 16, two verses. Psalm 91. We'll talk more about this on the radio today with Nan and with Madeline. God says this, I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. Did you know the word every is there? You know what? A lot of us, we think, oh, only when I'm prayed over a church. Or only when somebody else lays their hands on me, prays over me. Huh? Heal me. That's a direct prayer to God. And I shall be healed. That's from you to him. Straight. Not going through anybody else. Save me. How'd you get saved? And I shall be saved. How'd you get saved? It was a decision you made. We're getting ready to do that right now, Facebook audience. Save me. It's a decision you make. No person in between. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Lord, thou art my praise. I will answer your cry for help every time you pray. Everybody say, every time I pray. Every time you pray. You will find and feel my presence. Even in your time of pressure and trouble. You're going to find his presence. You're going to feel it. Man, that's a great promise. You'll find and feel his presence. I will be your glorious hero and give you a feast and you'll be satisfied with a full life. A full life. And with all that I do for you, for you will enjoy the fullness of my salvation. I love that. Those are the last two verses of Psalm 91. In a passion translation. So what did we learn today? Jesus wants to heal. Amen. He doesn't care how much money you gave so that you deserve to be right. healed. He has the authority. All you have to do is ask. Right? It, heal me. Jeremiah 17, 14. If you don't remember anything else today, Jeremiah 17, 14. I wrote the words to that song on this little board over here. Heal me and I shall be healed. Okay? That's an act, that is a request and then a confession. I request to be healed and then I shall be healed. <laughs> Save me and I shall be saved. When you ask Jesus in your heart, you don't think, well, I'm going to ask you to come in, but I'm not sure you're going to come in, Lord, because, I mean, I'm this, and I did that, and yeah, you really know me? Uh-uh. Jeremiah 17, 14, heal me, and I shall be healed. Save me, and I shall be saved. Okay? Fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Lord, thou art my praise. Wow. That'll preach. Guys, God wants us to walk in more healing and more victory than we do. Come on. You know what I'm saying? Amen. God doesn't want you sitting around in pains and aches and, you know, and all that. He wants you to claim his promises. <laughs> Jeremiah 17, 14. There it is. Write it down. Put it on your mirror in your bathroom. Put it on the, the dashboard or the visor in your car. Heal me and I shall be healed. Come on. It's up to you. Save me and I shall be saved. Started that too high. Fill me with thy Holy Spirit. Lord, thou art my praise. Why is he your praise? Because you've asked him to heal you. Because you've asked him to save you. So you're giving praise and glory. Woo, I've got so much more I want to say. So you've got to tune in to our radio show at 3 o'clock today. Uh, and that's on YouTube. Open it up and go to... Um, Tan Talk Radio, all, all together those words, Tan Talk Radio slash live, and you can join us on the show. Pastor Jim, you're going to repeat the words. We're going to give everybody an opportunity right now if they are not sure that you're going to heaven. Because we did that whole series last year, and I'll tell you what, you don't want to miss heaven. You do not want to miss all the blessings coming up, right? Right. Woo! They're going to be amazing. So if you're not sure about that, you need to repeat this prayer. Pastor Jim will repeat every phrase with me. Dear God, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. Dear God, I come to you now in the name of Jesus. I believe that God the Father sent Jesus the Son. I believe that God the Father sent Jesus the to, Son. To this earth to show us the nature of the Father. To this Jesus earth Jesus. to show us the nature of the Father. I believe that the Son, Jesus. I believe that the Son, Jesus. Willingly went to a cross. Willingly went to the cross. To die for my sins and my sicknesses. To die for my sins and my sicknesses. That's why I can claim healing. That's why I can claim healing. That's why I can claim salvation. That's why I can claim because salvation. Because it is a finished work. 
because it is a finished work. It is a done deal. It is a done deal. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for anything and everything. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me for anything and everything that I've ever said or done. That I've ever said or done. That was not pleasing to you. That was not pleasing to you. I invite you to come and live on the inside of me. I invite you to come and live on the inside of me. Be my Savior and my Lord. Be my Savior and my Lord. Be the healer of my body. Be the healer of my body. This I pray. This I pray. With all sincerity. With all sincerity. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Woo! Praise God. Well, glad you joined us today on Facebook. Thousands of you are doing that. Please uh, share the post in your area. This is going around the United States. Now we're not just uh, boosting to Florida. So uh, wherever you might be, share the post with your friends. And let's get the word of God out. Um, we're not asking you for money, nothing like that. We just want you to receive God's word. Subscribe. subscribe. That's right. Thank you for reminding me. I never remember to say that. Go to our YouTube channel and subscribe. Um, that's what we need to do. Our YouTube channel is new in the last few months. Capital letters B O H M. That stands for Beacon of Hope Ministries. Space Global. Little letters. Capital letters B O H M. Space Global. Go there, you can see all last year's 45 sermons on heaven. You can see a bunch of new teachings Pastor Jim's putting on there every week, which are really good. Uh, you can see our series on belonging we did, and now you can see uh, this new series, Jesus Messiah. So go to YouTube, open it up, and go to capital letters, B-O-H-M, space, global. And uh, this afternoon on our radio show, just go to YouTube and put in Tan Talk Radio slash live, 3 o'clock Eastern. God bless every one of you. It's been Pastor Marsha and the Beaconites. Glad you're with us today. Hope to see you again next Sunday. It'll be Pastor Jim here because I am going on a wonderful family trip to Indiana to uh, for my Aunt Betty's 100th birthday party. And I get to see a bunch of my grandkids too, so that's a bonus. So Pastor Jim will be here teaching next Sunday. God bless every one of you. I'll see you in two weeks. God bless you. See you.